nurses and hello top notchers welcome back to our youtube channel so welcome na naman sa ating panibagong common board questions related sa ating nursing practice 1 so pag-usapan natin ngayon itong ating public health surveillance, vaccine storage nurse deployment program and poverty and hunger concept of the nursing practice 1 okay Okay, so let's continue with your number 21. So, number 21, which of the following is not a criterion for prioritizing your health problem for surveillance? So, A, incidence of the problem. B, number of the previous studies of the problem. C, social and economic impact of the problem. Or D, public concern about the problem. Okay, so take note in your question number 21, ang hinahanap po natin dito is the negative answer. Okay, yung hindi criteria for prioritizing your health problem in for surveillance, okay? So, not a criteria for prioritizing health problem for surveillance. So, A, B, C, or D? Ano sagot po natin dyan? The correct answer here is letter B, okay? So, the number of the previous studies of the problem. So, bakit hindi po yan kailangan sa ating criteria for your prioritizing your problem, okay? So, take note that the incidence of the public concern the social and economic impact of the health problem are all important in assessing its suitability for surveillance. Okay? So, although na yung ating previous studies ay uh, pwede makatulong para i-characterize yung natural history, yung cause, at yung impact, the number of such studies is not used as criterion for prioritization. So, only the incidence of the public concern, the social and the economic impact of the health problem are all important in assessing its suitability for the needs of surveillance. So, yun lang po ang pwede. So, A, C, and D lang ang ating ginagamit na criteria for prioritization. So, letter B is not included. The next question, number 22, current public health surveillance targets the following. So, which one is not included? Again, so in your question number 22, ang hinahanap ulit natin dito is a negative answer. So, not included as a target of your public health surveillance. So, take note, ang tatandaan natin lagi kapag ang, uh, ang tinatanong is yung target for your public health surveillance, we have your mnemonics. Okay? Ang mnemonics natin is the COC mnemonics. Ano ba yung COC? COC stands for your C, chronic diseases, O for your occupational hazards, and the last C is your communicable diseases. So, ang hindi kasali sa ating target for your public health surveillance here is your letter B, population migration. Okay? So, the correct answer here is letter B. Current public health surveillance targets the health-related conditions among humans, including the chronic diseases like your cancer and the communicable diseases like in those on the notifiable diseases list. Example, yung mga HIV, diarrhea, measles, polio. So, yun yung mga target natin sa ating public health surveillance. So, health-related behaviors and occupationally related conditions like your blank, uh, black lung disease and other pneumoconiosis, okay, that is in need for your surveillance. Surveillance also focuses on the indicators of diseases or the disease potentials like in your diseases among animals like in your rabies, okay, or the presence of an infectious agent among animals or insects like in your dengue virus among your mosquitoes, okay? So, ang hindi po natin na uh, target sa ating public health surveillance is your population migration. So, the correct answer in your question number 22 is your letter B, population migration. The next, number 23, so common uses and applications of public health surveillance include which of the following examples? So, number one, detecting individual persons with malaria so that they can perceive prompt and your appropriate treatment. Number two, helping public health officials decide how to allocate their disease control resources. Or number three, identifying changes over time in the proportion of children with elevated blood lead levels in a community. Or number four, documenting changes in varicella or chickenpox incidents after a law mandating varicella vaccination in the expanded program of immunization took effect. So, letter A, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Letter B, 1 and 2. Letter C, 1, 2, and 3. Or letter D, 2 and 4. So, alin dito ang example natin sa application ng public health surveillance? So, the correct answer here is letter A. So, 1, 2, 3, and 4 are all included. So, meaning, 
all of these options are an example of your application for public health surveillance. Kasi, if we say public health surveillance, it can be applied to the following, okay? So, public health surveillance can be applied for detecting individual cases of diseases of public health importance like your malaria. So, it is also used to support planning in your priority set, uh, setting and it is also used for monitoring the trends and patterns of the health-related conditions like and for example for the elevated blood lead levels among children and supporting evaluation of prevention and control measures like in your vaccination requirement in the expanded program for immunization so letter a is the correct answer so all of these are an example of a need for public health surveillance okay so next situation Public health nurse Glenda is in charge of protecting the vaccine supply in the rural health unit. In performing this responsibility, she is guided by the standards and guidelines on how to protect the vaccines. Okay, so it's all about your protection of your vaccine potency. Okay, so question number 24. So question number 24, the type of refrigerator or freezer utilized to store vaccine in a health center should be A. Standard chest type freezer B. Standard refrigerator with separate freezer door and seal C. Dormitory type refrigerator and separate dormitory type freezer and letter D. Dormitory type refrigerator with small hanging freezer inside Okay, so take note Pag ang pinag-usapan natin is all about the refrigerator or freezer for the vaccine storage Always remember not to use a dormitory type of refrigerator. So, pag may nakita ka sa options or sa choices sa board exam na meron nakalagay dyan na dormitory type, ikakancel out na natin agad yan kasi mali na po agad yung ating letter C and letter D. So, between letter A and letter B, which of these option is most appropriate for vaccine storation? So, the correct answer your number 24 is letter B. Kailangan, ang gagamitin natin dito is the stand-alone or the standard refrigerator with a separate freezer door and seal. Okay? So, take note, it is the standard refrigerator with separate freezer door and seal. So, yun po yung most appropriate natin na refrigerator or freezer storage of your vaccines okay so the correct answer here in your question number 24 is letter b standard refrigerator with a separate freezer door and your seal okay so letter b is the correct answer so standard refrigerator with separate freezer door and seal is the most appropriate so standalone units that only refrigerate or only freeze are recommended by the cdc so, never use dormitory type of refrigerator, never use dormitory style or the bar style units of refrigerator because it can pose a significant risk of freezing vaccine even when used only for temporary storage. Okay? The use of dormitory style refrigerator is specifically prohibited for storage of the VFC vaccines or other vaccines purchased with public funds. So, pagpipili po tayo ng uh, appropriate uh, refrigerator or freezer for your vaccines, the most appropriate here is the standard refrigerator. Okay? So, the next question, number 25, which of the following vaccines go in the freezer? So, letter A, hepatitis B vaccine. Letter B, varicella or the chicken pox vaccine. Letter C, tetanus vaccine or D, diphtheria vaccine. Okay? So, elimination technique po tayo. So, take note, ang tinatanong po dito is kung ano yung bakunang ilalagay natin sa freezer. So, if we say sa freezer, freezer has a negative degree Celsius. Okay? So, around negative 15 to negative 25 degrees Celsius yung kanyang temperature dyan. So, ika-cancel out natin or i-eliminate natin yung tetanus and yung diphtheria. Why? Because tetanus and diphtheria are the vaccines considered as the most sensitive to freezing and your cold. So, bawal po sila sa extreme cold or freezing. So, masisira yung ating tetanus and diphtheria kapag sila po ay nailagay sa 
freezer. So, hindi po sila dapat nakalagay sa freezer. So, tatanggalin natin dito sa option yung ating letter C and yung ating letter D. So, ang may iwan sa ating option is yung letter A and itong si letter B. So, the correct answer in your question number 25 is letter B, the varicella or the chicken pox vaccine. Okay, bakit letter B ang sagot natin at hindi si letter A which is the hepatitis B vaccine? So, take note that hepatitis B vaccine stored, storage is in the refrigerator. In the body of refrigerator, in a temperature of positive 2 to positive 8 degrees Celsius. So, hindi rin siya pwedeng ilagay sa freezer, okay? So, sa body of refrigerator lang si hepatitis B vaccine. While your varicella or chicken pox ay pwedeng ilagay yan sa freezer kasama ng, uh, ng ating uh, zoster vaccine at saka ng oral polio vaccine and your measles vaccine. So, ang mga nasa freezer ay yung ating OPV, varicella or chicken pox vaccine, your zoster vaccine, and your measles vaccine. So, sila po yung mga, yung mga most sensitive to heat natin, kaya sila dapat ang nasa freezer. So, varicella, polio, and zoster vaccines must be stored in the freezer. OPV, varicella, and zoster vaccine must be kept frozen between negative 15 degrees Celsius and negative 25 degrees Celsius. Yung MMR natin, yung mumps mis or the measles mumps rubella vaccine, it can be stored in the refrigerator or freezer. So, yung MMR, pwede siya sa ating freezer, pwede rin po siya sa body of refrigerator. While your tetanus, DPT, hepatitis B, BCG, yan po ay nakalagay dapat sa body of the refrigerator. And take note, kapag ilalagay natin yung mga vaccines na yan sa ating loob ng ating uh, freezer, it must be lived with 2 to 3 inches between the vaccines and the freezer wall para ma-avoid po natin yung extreme freezing. Okay? Then, question number 26, the temperature in refrigerator and freezer should be checked A, twice a month, B, twice a day, C, once a day, or D, once a week. Okay? So, temperature in refrigerator and freezer should be checked by the nurse twice a day. Okay? That is a common board question. So, twice a day dapat na monitor ng ating nurse ang ating temperature sa refrigerator and sa freezer. So, the temperature monitoring is an important or the most important factor when it comes to ensuring the vaccines are stored correctly and remain in the best condition. So, kailangan i-monitor ito ni nurse para ma-maintain yung potency ng mga bakuna. So, we always recommend that the medical fridge temperatures must be recorded at least twice per day. Once in the morning and once in the evening or from the beginning of your shift and at the end of the day of your shift. So, twice a day dapat ang ating monitoring sa temperature ng freezer and refrigerator. Okay? So, number 27, Vaccines should never be stored in which part of refrigerator? A. Lower right-hand corner of the refrigerator B. Lower left-hand compartment of the refrigerator C. At the floor of the refrigerator or D. At the door of refrigerator So, we can store your vaccines at the lower right-hand corner of the refrigerator at the lower left-hand compartment of the refrigerator and at the floor of the refrigerator, okay? But never store a vaccine at the door of refrigerator. Bawal po yun. Bawal pong maglagay ng kahit anong bakuna sa may pintuan ng refrigerator, okay? So, vaccines should never be stored in the door of the freezer or at the door of the refrigerator because the temperatures in these areas are not stable. The door of the freezer can be used to store extra frozen packs or blue eyes or yung tinatawag natin na cold dogs and the door of the refrigerators can be used to store extra water containers or diluents that do not contain vaccine antigen. But take note, itong may lalagay natin ng mga water bottles dito is not for drinking. Okay? Do not store vaccines indoors. Do not store vaccines in the vegetable or fruit beans and at the deli drawers or crispers. Okay? So, bawal po yun. Okay? Number 28. So, vaccines can be mixed in a single syringe when? So, kailan mo daw pwedeng paghaluin yung ating mga bakuna in a single syringe? A. When there is a need to decrease the number of the injection to be given? B. When the remaining vaccines needed to be consumed during the day? C. When the vaccines 
or when giving all live or all inactivated vaccines or the when vaccines are licensed and labeled to be mixed. So, the correct answer for question number 28 is letter D. So, vaccines can be mixed in a syringe or a single syringe when vaccines are licensed and labeled to be mixed. So, different single components of combination vaccines should never be mixed in the same syringe by an end user unless specifically licensed for such use and when vaccines are licensed and labeled to be mixed. So, the correct answer here is letter so, pwedeng paghaluin basta ito ay labeled and licensed to be mixed. Okay, so next situation. Hart has recently passed the Philippine Nurses Licensure Examination. She plans to apply in the Nurse Deployment Project of the Department of Health. So, number 29. The NDP or the Nurse Deployment Program is open to all nurses who fulfill the following qualifications except so, negative answer po ang hinahanap natin dito. So, yung hindi qualification in application for NDP. Okay? So, letter A, willing to undergo recruitment and selection process. B, it possess an official and valid PRC professional identification card. C, must be at least 21 years old at the time of application. Or D, physically and mentally fit as, as shown in the medical certificate. Okay? So, alin dito ang hindi kailangan sa pag a ng NDP? So, the correct answer here is letter C. Because letter A, letter B, and letter D are all qualifications for NDP application. Kasi hindi naman kailangan na 21 years old ka para ikaw ay makapag-apply as a nurse in a nurse in a deployment program. So kahit 18 years old ka lang basta ikaw ay lisensyado na, okay? Basta ikaw ay merong hawak na valid PRC license, you can apply as an NDP. Tanda po natin 'yan. So letter C, mali po 'yon kasi must be at least 21 years old daw siya at the time of application, which is kahit 18 ka lang pwede ka nang magtrabaho as an NDP, okay? So that is your exact answer. So, who may apply for your NDP or Nurse Deployment Program? So, take note, all license, uh, all license and a holder of a valid PRC licensed nurse can apply for NDP. Ano pa? So, uh, you must be physically and mentally fit. You must be willing to be assigned in a remote depressed municipalities. And you must be willing to render community health service. Okay, so priority for application shall be given to the following. Yung mga nurses who are graduates of the RN Hills program and nurses residing in the localities where the recipient rural health unit or the health facilities are located. So, ano po ba yung mga requirements sa ating application? So, number one, you must provide a four copies of your personal data sheet. Number two, you have your certified true copy of your diploma for BSN. Number three, the certified true copy of your transcript of records. And number four, your authenticated PRC board rating and your authenticated PRC license. And the number five, original copy of your NBI clearance. So, nakita natin dito, wala naman pong requirement for or qualification na kailangan 21 years old ka upon your application for nurse deployment program. Then, question number 30. The NDP has been designed by the Department of Health primary to A. Improve local health systems in support of universal health care B. To augment staff or rural health of rural health units C. Provide experience to new nurses in terms of work realities or D. Prevent nurses from seeking jobs abroad okay? So, elimination technique tayo Una natin tatanggalin ang letter D Okay? So, hindi po ginawa ang NDP para i-prevent yung mga nurses para mag-abroad. Mali po yun. Okay? So, hindi po pinipigilan ng NDP yung pag-abroad ng mga nurses. So, the correct answer here is letter A. Okay? So, in 2014, the DOH has designed the NDP primary to improve the local health system that will support the country's attainment of your universal health care or yung tinatawag natin na kalusugan pangkalahatan. Okay? So, NDP is one of the projects of the DOH under the Human Resource for Health Deployment Program which seeks to send nurses to poor communities and geographically isolated and disadvantaged areas in the Philippines. So, your NDP aims to augment the workforce in the rural health unit 
birthing homes, and barangay health stations. The program also provides employment and work experience for nurses in rural areas and underserved communities. But the primary reason kung bakit meron tayong nurse deployment program, that is to improve local health system that will support the country's attainment of your universal health care. So the correct answer here is letter A. The next question number 31, under this program of NDP, Pepita will be hired on a contract of service status. She will receive a monthly salary of A, 13,000 pesos, B, 18,000 pesos, or C, 15,000 pesos, or D, 22,000 pesos. So, magkano ang magiging sahod daw ni Nurse Pepita kapag siya ay ma-hire as an NDP? So, ang pwedeng ma-receive ni Nurse Pepita is amounting to 18,000 pesos. So, letter B is the correct answer. Nurses hired in your NDP will be under a contract of services for 6 months. Okay? That can be renewed based on the very satisfactory performance. And, nurses will receive a monthly salary of amounting to 18,000 or the salary grade 11. So, take note, noong NDP 2014, ang sinasahod po nila is nasa 18,000 18, pesos and that is under the salary grade 11. But as of this writing, the new salary grade is increased to salary grade 15. So, bago na po yung ating salary grade ngayon. So, entry level nurse sa ating NDP is salary grade 15 na sa ngayon. Okay? Nurse 1, salary grade 11 is amounting to 18,549. And for the current salary grade, which is salary grade 15, it will be amounting now to 30, uh, 30,531 pesos. And for public health nurse 2, salary grade 17 naman po sa kanila, which is amounting to 32,747 pesos. Okay? So that is your letter B. Number 32. Nurse Pepita knows that as an NDP nurse, she may be assigned in any of the following areas. Number 1, rural health units. Number 2, barangay health stations. Number 3, disaster prone areas. Number 4, the level 1 LGU hospitals. Number 5, the DOH hospitals. Or number 6, birthing homes. So, A, 2, 4, 6. B, 1, 3, and 4. C, 2, 3, 5, and 6, or D, 1, 2, and 5. So, kung ikaw ay ma-hire as an NDP, saan ka kaya ilalagay dito? Okay? So, pwede kang ilagay sa A, 2, 4, and 6, B, 1, 3, and 4, C, 2, 3, 5, and 6, or D, 1, 2, and 5. So, the correct answer here is letter A, 2, 4, and 6. Pwede kang ilagay sa RHU, pero mismatch na yung ibang choices, okay? So, sa letter A kasi, match po yung mga choices natin or options natin. So, pwede kang ilagay sa, sa ating barangay health stations, sa level 1 LG hospitals, and sa mga birthing homes, okay? So, 246 is the correct answer. The nurses are then assigned in the RHU, birthing homes, barangay health stations, level 1 LG hospital under the supervision of a public health nurse or a chief nurse, okay? So, the correct answer here is letter A, 2, 4, and 6. Then, question number 33, the NDP is a partnership between the DOH and the other government agencies and organizations. Which of the following is not included? A, DSWD, B, the PRC or the PRC Board of Nursing, C, local government units, or D, the Philippine Nurses association, okay? So, which is not included? Again, not included po ang hinahanap natin. Okay, so the correct answer in your number 33 is letter A, the DSWD or the Department of Social Welfare and Development. So, DSWD is not included in your government agencies and organization in partnership with the DOH for its NDP program. So, hindi po siya kasama doon, okay? B, C, and D are all included except letter a. So, the NDP project shall require partnership with other agencies and organizations like the DILG, the PRCBON, the PNA, and other LGUs. Option A is not included during RN Hills program, DSWD is one of the agency. But in your NDP, it is not included as your partner agency. Okay? So, letter A is the correct answer. Okay, the next situation... As a public health nurse, you know that many of the members of the community are poor and underserved, affecting their health status. 
Question number 34, poverty remain a challenge of the country. The following are some facts on poverty based on the latest 2015 statistical report. Which statement is not included? Okay, so ibig sabihin niyan, negative statement po yung hindi fact ang ating hahanapin. Okay, so hindi, hindi true. Not true statement about the poverty based a poverty based on the latest 2015 statistical report. So, A, B, C, or D. So, sabi sa letter A, 28% of the country's 97 million people live below the poverty line. Letter B naman, 15 million Filipinos will rise above poverty in 2020. Letter C naman, farmers, fishermen, and children consistently posted the highest poverty incidence and sa letter D naman, more than 12 million Filipinos are living in extreme poverty. So, alin dito yung mga facts? Okay? Ang fact dito is letter letter D, more than 12 million Filipinos are living in extreme poverty. So, totoo po yun. The next fact is letter C. Okay? Farmers, fishermen, and children consistently posted as the highest poverty Incidents. Okay, so C and D are facts. So A or B ang sagot. So alin jan ang uh, alin jan ang hindi uh, hindi fact or not included or not a true statement about poverty based on the 2015 statistical report. Okay, so according to this, we have your uh, poverty incidents among the population in 2015. The proportion of your poor Filipinos was estimated at 23.3%. So, mali yung letter A. Kasi nakalagay sa letter A is 28%. So, the correct answer here is letter A. So, based on the 2015 survey, it also found that 12.1% of the population, roughly 12.18 million Filipinos, are still living in the subsistence or extreme poverty. So, among of the nine basic sectors are the farmers, the fishermen, and children belonging to the families with income below the official poverty threshold or poor families posted the highest poverty incidence in 2015. So, ang hindi po doon included is yung letter A. Okay, kasi 28% kasi ang nakalagay doon, which is 23.3% lang dapat. Okay? The next question number 35 in identifying factors that contributes to poverty, homelessness and poor health of the prime segment of a population which of the following should you assess? A. Mental illness and community support B. Poverty provision of social support and basic services C. Mobility and age of family members or D. Neighborhood, environment and sanitation okay, So take note, ang tanong dito is Ano yung factor na kailangan natin na alamin or identify contributing to the poverty, homelessness, and poor health of a deprived segment of the population? Okay? So, the correct answer here is letter B. Okay? B is the correct answer for your question number 35. So, take note that the poverty is a social problem and therefore it affects not only one to two individuals or family but a large population so it affects the society in general so poverty includes the lack of access to the services like education healthcare services and to your other resources so when there is poverty it is important for the nurse to assess the access of the individual or the population or the ability of the community to provide the basic social needs of its people okay so letter b is the correct answer. The next question number 36, the population in a poor community has risen including the increasing trend of pregnant women who are undernourished. You coordinate with the local social welfare department to provide foods that are nutritionally adequate. This is considered as A. Health promotion B. Tertiary prevention C. Primary prevention or D. Secondary level of prevention. Okay, so take note in your number 36, meron ng sakit yung mga pregnant women. Okay, ano ba condition nila? They are now considered as undernourished na. So, pag wala pang sakit, ang ating prevention doon is pwede nga health promotion or primary prevention sana. Kaso, sa given sa ating situation, undernourished na yung mga pregnant women. So, pag undernourished na, tapos nagbigay tayo ng foods, nutritionally adequate foods, that is now considered as secondary 
prevention, which is the letter D. So, secondary prevention is the early detection and treatment. So, pregnant women were already having problems with nutrition kasi nga under, undernourished na daw sila. So, providing nutritious foods as a supplement to the deficiencies in nutrition is an intervention to the problem. So, pag may intervention ka nang ginagawa to solve the problem, that is now known as the secondary level of prevention. The next, number 37, in another group of the community, you realize that young adult members have poor nutritional habits. You know that these are risk factors for the non-communicable diseases like the diabetes and cardiovascular disease. These risk factors can affect their A. Future potential to change their dietary habits B. Ability to obtain health services C. Ability not, uh, to network social support or D. Health status and employment potential Okay, so take note, kapag ikaw da ay merong risk factor for non-communicable disease like your diabetes and cardiovascular disease magkakaroon ko ngayon ng risk factors na pwedeng maka sa health status mo, syempre, and employment potential. Kasi, kung ikaw ay may sakit sa puso at kung ikaw ay meron di di diabetes or diabetes, ikaw naman ay mahihirapan sa pag-apply sa trabaho kasi nga meron kang health condition. Okay? So, a risk factor is any attribute, characteristic, or exposure of an individual that increases the likelihood of developing a disease. So, Moreover, the NCDs are lifestyle diseases and not caused by pathogenic agents that can be cured easily through antibiotics, antifungals, or antivirals. Okay? So, take note, ang tinatanong lang naman dito is kung ano mangyayari kapag ikaw ay nagkaroon ng risk factors in your, in your uh, heart disease and diabetes. Siyempre, magkakaroon ka dito ng problem in your health status and magkakaroon ka ng issue or problema pagdating sa pag-apply sa trabaho or employment status. So, the correct answer here is letter D. Okay, so question number 38. You are aware that people with mental and psychosocial disabilities belongs to the vulnerable group. They are restricted in their ability to access essential health and social care. In your advocacy, you will include all of the following message but one. Okay, so in your question number 38, it is asking for a negative answer. Okay? So, negative ang hinahanap natin dito. So, uh, a message that you will not include ang hinahanap. Okay? So, letter A, persons with mental and psychosocial disabilities should be confined in an institution. Okay? So, letter A. So, sa letter A pa lang, makikita na natin na ito ay isang negative message. Okay? Negative na agad yung mensahe ng letter A. Lahat daw ng mga tao na merong mental and psychosocial disability, kailangan daw ay makonfine sa in, uh, institution. So, mali po yun. So, the correct answer here is letter A. Kasi yung letter B, letter C, and letter D are all positive message. Okay? So, letter B, employment and job opportunities must be created for people with mental and psychosocial disabilities. Oo nga naman. And letter C, mental health should be included in services during and after emergencies and disasters. And letter D, mental health services should be integrated systematically in all health services including the primary level of health care. Okay? So, the answer here is letter A, persons with mental and psychosocial disabilities does not have to be confined in an institution so long as they are not imposing threat to their community and to their own safety and does not have any acute symptoms that need 24-hour medical and psychiatric care. Okay? So, tandaan natin dyan. So, hindi lahat ng mga tao may sakit sa pag-iisip ay kailangan natin dalhin agad yan sa institution. Uh, unless kung ito ay nag impose na ng threat sa community at sa kanilang own safety. Okay? So, the correct answer here is letter A.